This is the last new thing we're going to learn about natural deductive proofs, and that is a theorem. A theorem is any well-formed formula that can be proven without any given assumptions. In other words, we can write this as proves alpha. And if we want, we can write, say, the empty set here. This just means there's no assumptions whatsoever, and we can get alpha out of it. A nice thing to know is that every theorem is a tautology and vice versa. So these are just facts that are always true. For example, we don't need any assumptions, any given assumptions, to know that not P and not P is a theorem, is a tautology. Uh, P or P, that's a given. P or not not P, that's also a given. And P or not P, that's a given. But if we want to use these as theorems, we still need to prove them. So we need to essentially start with no assumptions whatsoever and then create a proof. So we're going to do that for these four in this video. So the first one, I want to show that P, arrow P, is a theorem. So I can still use all the rules as before. I can use CP, RAA, uh, I can use and introduction, and elimination, and all those things. So instead of having an assumption that we start out with, we don't have anything. So what I can do to start is, is I can still make assumptions. I can still make assumptions for CP and for RAA, that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll start with an assumption, a hypothesis, for CP. So this just isn't given anymore. It's not information we start with that is guaranteed to be true. It's just a hypothesis. So we can set this up now. Okay. Well, if we have P, then in line two, we can just reiterate it. So two is a reiteration. And then in line three, we can pull P arrow P out. Because from one to two, through a conditional proof, we got that if we assume P, then we get P. So this would be the proof that P arrow P is a theorem. So notice how there's no line to the left of this. And that's because when we introduce that line in our other proofs, usually we have some assumptions. And then we end up with something at the end. So this is our consequent. But when we have the line to the left, that means that we have assumptions that we used to get that consequent. But in this case, on the left here, we only have our line when we introduce our subproof. Uh, when we go out of it, we don't have any assumptions to begin with. So P or P is just on its own. It's the theorem. Okay, let's try uh, not P and not P. Let's prove that. Well, we can still use strategies here. So if I need to get not P and not P, I'm just going to assume P and not P and hope that we can negate it with a contradiction. So that's what I'll do. Uh, in line one, I'll assume P and not P. So this is a hypothesis for contradiction. I want to prove that this is going to give us a contradiction. So we can negate it. So we'll start an assumption here. Okay, well, if I have P and not P, uh, that gives me a contradiction by definition. So actually, I, I can... I can redraw this a little bit. Uh, if I have P and not P, then in line two, I can negate this and I can get P and not P. And from one to one, that was a proof by contradiction because P and not P itself is a contradiction. I guess if I want to make this a little bit more explicit, what I could do is in line two and line three, I could use and elimination on one to get P not P. And then in line four, I can then claim that this is a proof by contradiction because I have P and I have not P, therefore the assumption must be false. So from one to three, that is RAA. That'd be another way of doing it where everything is explicit. But again, we started with no assumptions. We did a subproof where we assumed RAA, P and out P for RAA, and then we found it. But we didn't need any initial assumptions to get to not P and not P. We didn't need any initial assumptions that were given to us for free to get P or OP. This isn't dependent on whatever we're given. Okay, let's do the proof that we have P arrow not not P. So what I will need to do is I will need to assume P for a CP proof. It's a conditional proof. I have P arrow something, so I need to assume P. Who knows how long this will go? Let's say it's right here. Uh, two, what am I going to do? I need to get not not p. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to assume not p, 
for RAA. I want to get a contradiction here with not P. And I think I'm going to have a fairly easy time getting this. So in line three, I'm going to reiterate P from one. So that's one reiteration. Now I have P and I have not P. So I get a contradiction. So in line four, I can get not not P. And this comes from two to three by RAA because we assume not P and we get P. And now we have P to not not P from one to four. So in line five, I can write, okay, uh, if we assume P, we show that we get not not P. So this is one to four, and this is a conditional proof. So this means whenever we want, we can introduce P arrow not not P. This is like doing double negation in the opposite direction. Imagine that I'm somewhere in a proof. So let's say I'm doing a proof, and I have Q or P, and I'm trying to get at some point uh, not not Q or P. Well, double negation just takes away the two negations. But what I can do now is I can introduce, say, a theorem somewhere in line J that says, okay, if I have Q or P, then I have not not Q or P. And this is just a theorem. It's a theorem from what we showed now. So then in line K, I can use that theorem on Q or P to get not not Q or P. It speeds things up. Okay, one more that we'll do. We want to show that P or not P is a theorem. So we want to show this is true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume the negation for contradiction. So I'm going to assume that not P or not P is true. This is a hypothesis that we will use for a contradiction. So that'll be line one, which means we have to introduce our line here and our assumption. Okay, now I need to get P or not P at some point. So I think I'm going to use not P or not P as a tool for contradiction. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get P or not P along with not P or not P so I can get a contradiction and negate some things. So that's my goal. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to assume P for RAA. Well, I'll just assume P. So I should set this up. I think I need three lines. So in line three, I'm going to use or introduction to get P or not P. So from line two, or introduction to get P or not P. And then at four, I'm going to reiterate the assumption. So from one, I've reiterated not P or not P. We have a contradiction now. So then in line five, I can claim not P. And this is from two through four, and this is a RAA proof. Okay, so I have not P. Well, this is good because then in line six, I can use or introduction to get P or not P. So line five or introduction. Now I have P or not P in line six, and I have not P or not P in line one. So therefore in line seven, I can get not not P or not P. So this is from one to six, proof by contradiction. So that's because I had not P or not P here, and I have P or not P here. That gives us a contradiction with those two, so we can pull those out through RAA. At this point now, we scroll down a little bit. So that way in line eight, we can use a double negation on line seven to get P or not P. So as you can see, we're outside of the line now. We don't need any assumptions that are given to us for free to do this. Uh, but we did have some assumptions for hypotheses for RAA that we negated at some point and we closed off. So uh, those are the four theorems that we can use now at any time. Of course, there are a lot more. And we'll do another exercise video at some point where we do some more. But the key, the important part why we do this is that we can now introduce a theorem anytime we want to as a proof. It's a fact. It's a fact it happens. So if we have to show, for example, that Q proves P or not P, well, here's a proof of it. Okay, so we're given Q. This is just a hypothesis. We're given this for free. But we know that P or not P should always be true. It should always be true. It's a tautology. So everything proves P or not P. So in line two now, 
instead of having to do that entire thing where we assume not p or not p, we find a contradiction to get not not p or not p, we can now just introduce it as a theorem. So we can do p or not p. This is called a theorem. Uh, specifically, this is called law of the excluded middle, so lem, and that would be the end of our proof. Much shorter now. So if you have any questions about this, you can ask them in the comments below and I'll get to you when I can.